One of the biggest things that kills power is tension. And the reason that kills power is because when you're tense, you can try this right now. If you have a racket, just grab it and be tense and swing. When you're tense, you can't build up racketed speed. Or when you try to build racketed speed, it takes a lot more effort compared to being loose. Loose is really important. But what do you hear? Hey, just relax. That's the key. Just relax and hit your backhand. But guess what? You're relaxing now you're all over the place and you know know what to relax and when to relax it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to relax the proper way to get your back and to give you more power without so much effort. Because, not that you're gonna be swinging that much faster, it's you're gonna swing the same amount, but you're gonna be looser, allowing your arms and your hands to speed through the ball instead of being stiff and rigid. So the very first idea I want you to have is that on your backhand, when you're swinging, the racket needs to act like a hinge. You're probably thinking like, what's a hinge? If you think of a door hinge, like this is the door and this is the wall, a hinge allows the door to go back and forth while this is stable. If we think and take the same idea, what happens when we swing, instead of having our arms and racket swing at the same time at the same rate, what really happens because of the weight of the head of the racket and we actually relaxing your hands, I'm gonna show you how to do it, what happens is you slightly leave the racket head behind. So as you swing, instead of them both going at the same time, if you're relaxing your hands, you start swinging, you see this kind of delayed effect where the racket head is lagging as the hands move forward. And this is crucial and the key. The reason why is this. When we swing, whether it be a forehand or a backhand, you want to get your hand or your dominant hand into this locked in position. And what I mean by that is my left hand gets into an extended position. This is a much stronger position than this. When my hands are straight like this, I have to lock them down, causing tension and also causes the impact to go through my wrist. But when I relax and actually start swinging forward like this, you can see how the racket is delayed, but it actually has put my wrist into this locked in position. Hopefully you can see that L shape right there, this little locked in position, which naturally is a stronger position. When you see a lot of the pros, what they're doing is relaxing, allowing the hinge to take place and getting that locked in position and timing it that as the racket's in this locked in position, as they swing, boom, the racket makes contact and right after it, then they're allowing that head weight or the weight of the head to then take the racket around. So you get this action of they being very smooth and pulling the hands forward and through contact, your hand or wrist stays in that locked in position and after contact, it goes around. And that's how you can start building more racketed speed in your swing without having to swing harder. We're not actually swinging harder because we're loose. The racket and arm get to move faster instead of being so rigid. So now let's get to some drills so you can start practicing this at home. The very first drill we're gonna do is actually learning how to do it the wrong way so we can feel how it feels to do it the right way. And what I mean by the wrong way is in a sense, the inefficient way. There's not a wrong or right way, but there's a more efficient way. And so what we're gonna do is take this basket, I'm gonna use it as resistance. Now this basket has wheels, you can use a, a wall. I was gonna use the, the net post, but just for convenience, I'm gonna use the basket here. I'm gonna have my hands, I'm gonna create tension in my hands. And I'm gonna actually try to push the basket a little bit. So if I try to push the basket, you can see how the racket head doesn't go anywhere, my wrists don't go anywhere, but the basket's going somewhere. So you can see that I'm really pushing on the, the basket. From here, what we wanna do is relax. And so what this does is, if, you if I take my hand like this and swing the racket, you can see how the head or the weight of the head is getting left behind. And so what we want to do here, if I relax, and I'm going to give myself a little bit more room so I can just have the racket lay on the edge of the basket here. If I relax now and let my hands relax, as I let it relax, you can see how the head is being left behind. It's being forced behind because it's putting my wrist in this extended position. Here, boom, and then you can see how it comes up later. So what's happening is because I relax, this will start hinging back and then send the racket forward. Now what we want to do when we're doing this is not that we want the racket to hinge back and then fly into the uh, ball. What we want to do is have it hinge back in this moment and where we're making contact and then right after you'll see my racket start going forward. Will you see sometime a little hinging forward? Yes, but it's not the, the end all be all because if you would see that you would see the pros stop and try to hinge just slap into the ball compared to what you're seeing is they're going back and they're timing it where this is as the wrist is in this extended position, they make contact and then the racket goes forward. Start practicing this. So all I'm gonna do is start loosening up. So now I'm leaving the racket head behind. By the way, if you wanna know how to do this on your forehand, make sure you go check out the video right here. But, so as we hinge, we're gonna pull this forward. Pull forward, I'm getting my racket on this. And so once I start doing here, what I'm gonna start doing is actually start closing the racket a little bit. You see this in different degrees of it. You see players like Nadal, almost closing the racket completely. You see players like Djokovic closing it. They're all closing it for the matter of when they start pulling the racket forward, they don't want the racket to come open. Sometimes you do see players when they have a racket 
very um, flat, but generally when you see this, usually having an Eastern grip, they're very straight through the ball. You see sometimes Tiafo and uh, Nick Curios, when they hit backhands, they're very driving through the ball. The type of backhand I'm talking about right now has a little bit of topspin for margin and safety. And so now as I close the racket, I'm gonna pull my hands up. And so this creates topspin just because my rack is coming up and brushing the ball. From here, I'm gonna move the basket out of the way or I'm gonna move back from the, whatever I'm using as resistance. From here, what I want you to do is relax your hands so it allows the hinge to work. Sometimes this is trickier because you have two hands and we wanna clutch down on the racket. So what I recommend is you take like your um, thumb or your uh, pointer finger and start just holding the racket a little bit and then wrap your fingers around and keep it nice and loose and light. So if I do this, you can see it's almost like a fishtail here because my hands are loose. And what I wanna do from this fishtail action is pull my hands forward and let my racket lag behind. Just get used to relaxing and let it lag behind. Now the trick is we wanna let the ball come into our strike zone more to make sure that we have an opportunity to make contact here and push through it. And this is now, once you start practicing this, where you feel comfortable letting the racket come uh, lag behind and come through, we can start doing drop fed balls. Now, here's a extra drill you might wanna try, is to actually do this just left-handed. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and get my left hand where I'm gonna do that same action. So you can see how if I pull here and I just keep pulling around, looks great. Okay, my left hand's doing this. Now I gotta teach my right hand to do it. With my right hand, what I'm gonna do is actually use my left hand and then toss it up in the air and then grab with my right hand. And you can see the same effect and how easy it is to get the ball in, just simply relaxing and not being stiff. And so I'll do a couple more, and you wanna do a ton of these, because what happens when we get nervous, uh, there's a little tension, maybe the ball's hit really deep, we go and then we lose that sense of feel. When you do this right, you'll notice naturally, if you're using your body to rotate into the ball, and not just your arms, when you rotate to the ball, and you're loose, you get a lot of power. That one, I need to close down the racket face and come up. There you go. And so you can really see how, boom, the racket is allowed to work. And that's so important. From here, I would just use the ball machine and practice the timing of letting the ball come back into my strike zones and making sure that I have some room for lag. Now, one more quick tip. If you want to have that loose sensation, make sure even when I'm talking, taking a racket back here, you can see there's room for my racket to get into this position. So make sure if you wanna know how to do this on the forehand, go watch this video right here because it'll explain the exact same drills you can do on your forehand side to create this sensation. Let me know in the comments if you've done this before or if you understand this concept and you used it on your two-handed backhand.